Now we're on. Hello, this is Jonathan Munoz again for another talk on what I do and hopefully this, this serves you as, as a guidance and you can use this, this information, this inside information for your rotations, observer shapes, everything, or you're about to start night work or, or your inpatient care um, rotation as a resident. Okay, so I wanna start by saying that I am a family practice hospitalist and a hospitalist in many of the hospitalists in the, many of the hospitals uh, that have an internal medicine rotation a hospitalist is the one that runs the inpatient medicine uh, program the inpatient medicine rotation so the residents get assigned to a hospitalist that supervises their work we're talking about I don't know, a team of three or five uh, residents with one senior, uh, one second year, and three interns. And there can be many teams like that in the hospital, according to how big is your hospital, or, um, or it can be just one team. Like for example, my, my hospital has 400 beds, and the, the inpatient care team has one supervising doc and has about six residents. Two are seniors, three are um, second years, and the rest, uh, no, two are seniors, two are second years, and two are interns. So they split the work among them, and that's how the inpatient care rotation um, runs. So, um, when you're a resident, when you're an intern, um, you have the team that works at daytime, um, there are probably around six, six of them at daytime per team, and you have the team that works at nighttime, and there are usually only two, a second year or a third year with an intern, and unfortunately the intern gets to, gets to do the most work at nighttime. And what is there to do? What is there to do? Um, so all the morning team will sign off to you all their patients, or we will tell you at least which ones are the ones that are about to crash, which ones are the unstable, and which one need to be seen again at nighttime, so so you can go around on them and make sure they survive the night. So your job, if you decide to take it, is to make them survive through the night. And what can happen at night, right? Uh, I can be here right now relaxing, um, until an admission comes my way. And suddenly a patient that is currently hospitalized can be, I don't know, having chest pain. So the nurse will call you and say, doc, this patient is a patient of Dr. Uh, McGuinness. And this patient just started to have chest pain or he became hypoxic. Or usually hypoxia is, is one of those uh, alter. He became more alter. And according to, to what the, um, the concern is, you will have to, to go to bedside, see the patient, and alter mental status. You evaluate and see, could this be a stroke, right? That's the main the main concern at night time. Could this be a stroke? Um, or this patient just took too many pain medications overnight and we need to reverse it? Uh, or is the sepsis getting worse? So all these possibilities that you consider during admission, you can do at night time for your hospitalized patients. So that's, that's one thing that can happen at nighttime. The nurses calling you for a patient that is um, unstable. Then another thing that can happen at nighttime is a rapid response. A rapid response means that the patient um, is crashing completely, it's hypotensive. Let's say a blood pressure of 80 over 50 and they need rapid action. So they call a rapid response. And it will be a big alarm that goes overhead page and say rapid response, rapid response, telemetry station three, come over. So everyone go gets there fast. Um, laboratory, doctors, and physical therapy, respiratory therapies, everyone gets there trying to help. Uh, well, everyone has a, an assigned role and the nurses are already there ready with a crash cart in case this rapid response, this patient that is only hypotensive codes, uh, arrests. So 
one thing is a rapid response and it's not the, the worst thing. The worst thing is that this rapid response becomes a code blue. And depending on on your um, depending on on your hospital and the scope of the um, assignments that you're allowed to do, um, there will be a team that's specific for a code blue. So you as a resident that's in house may not be the one intubating that patient if this patient goes into a code blue. Because code blue is only for basically two things. The patient crashed into a cardiac arrest and you need to start doing the ACLS or the patient needs um, mechanical intubation, mechanical uh, ventilation and needs to be intubated. So the, for the rapid response, you can take action, you can give boluses, you can give medications, you can uh, um, assess the situation and say, okay, let's send, send this patient to ICU because he may crash soon or his condition is enough to be in ICU, not in telemetry. So you transfer, you, you, you do some things to, to kind of bump him up or improve him. Um, usually we do um, boluses, um, albumin, uh, start antibiotics at night time for those patients, but some, some of them need to be uh, upgraded to ICU. Um, so those are two things that can happen. Then at night time, you also get a pager where is um, where the nurses in all the stations in the hospital, medical units, telemetry units, will call you for other orders uh, for stable patients. Like they will call you for uh, bowel movement protocol. They will they will check on the chart and they will realize that the patient hasn't had a uh, bowel movement in four days. And the night time is the perfect time to to call the doctor and get an order for for a suppository. Or they will call you because no one has reconciled the medication list that this patient takes at home, which is very important because sometimes there are medications that cannot be skipped or that can contribute to the reason of this patient presentation and you need to resume these doses, these medications. Like think about corticosteroids, a patient that has chronic use of uh, prednisone at home, 10 milligrams, and is sick and we're treating him for sepsis, but we're not um, resuming his prednisone. What's gonna happen? He's going to crash, right? He's not gonna improve. So those things can happen at night time. They can call you for I don't know, for, for a sleeping pill for the patient because uh, another big thing in hospitals is customer satisfaction. So they can call you to say, hey doc, um, hey doc, this patient cannot sleep. Uh, can you give me an order for a sleeping pill? Or this patient is very anxious. Or one of my favorites is this patient is agitated and he's screaming, he's trying to get out of bed. Uh, can you give me something to relax him? And, if that happens, you always have to go bedside and check on the patient. You cannot just say, oh yeah, yeah, take some, some Ativa and IV and you know, put him to sleep. That's, that's wrong and um, it's a big red flow in, in rotation. So as a resident intern, you are not um, having many options but to go bedside, evaluate a patient and um, you know, find out what they really need. Uh, if it's agitation, you, you, may, you may use uh, uh, an anti-anxiety, uh, a sedate, sedative medication, but you have to assess them first. There are many steps and many things you can use to, to control a patient that's agitated. Okay, um, that, those are the things that happen around the hospital uh, that will um, take your time at nighttime. But the main thing at, at nighttime are the admissions that come from the ER. So. At nighttime, basically, what you really have to work on is doing your admissions. So the ER will call you and say, start calling you, uh, I don't know, depends on how busy your hospital is. When I was a resident, um, we could get up to eight admissions at night for, for two interns. Uh, now, as a, as a solo hospitalist or part of, part of a hospitalist group, at nighttime, I can get 12, 15 admissions. And I got used to it, it's not that bad. And, without supervision, without need to uh, to report to someone, it's very easy to do an HMP and very easy to, to move from one patient to the, to the other. Um, but it, just, it didn't just be like that in residency. So for residency, getting your best game and move to a patient, follow your, follow your, your system. If you have a system for admissions, 
uh, you have a template on how to admit a patient, like uh, how to do an HMP, just follow the HMP very fast, dictate that to the point and go to your assessment and plan and the assessment and plan, dictate your mind out. Say everything you need to say about uh, about that patient you are working. And we will to talk about that later, but this is, uh, this is something very popular these days. It's called the Dragon, and it's basically a microphone that's connected to the computer, to your uh, EHR system, and you can dictate and say, um, patient is 80 years old, male patient, and is here for chest pain, we're going to keep him overnight. And it goes to your computer, right? It's a dictation system, it's live, it's uh, in the moment. Uh, I, I love to use this thing. Um, We'll make a video of that. So, but basically, that's what happens at night time. You are you are doing admissions and and you prepare your HMP, you prepare your note with your plan, and the next day, in the morning, you have to sign out these admissions to the team. You have to, let's say, in the morning team there's three three interns. You have to assign each of the admissions to one of them. Um, we usually like to do like one per each and rotate and so everyone gets the same amount um, so there's no problems with it and so basically that um, many many inconvenience with working at night time is that you should be sleeping at night time right so by the next day you're very tired and uh, basically that uh, you're alone there you're you, you don't have all the all the residents around you there's not much food around uh, in the hospitals at night time, but other than that, I think um, you you can get used to it. And if you if you think positively about working at night, uh, there's so much that you can do if you learn to work at night time. Like if you get good at ACLS, at rapid responses, you get good at doing HMPs fast, and you get on a method. Um, you can be at the end of um, residency. You can work as a nocturnist, which is a person that only works at night and only does admissions, which is better for some, and some people don't like it, um, because um, at night time, most people like it. Um, the reason, mainly because you just have to see them do an HMP, and you're out of the case. Uh, during daytime, you have to do so much legwork. You have to call case managers. You have to assess medications. You have to talk to the family. At nighttime, no. At nighttime, you just do an HMP, admit the patient, and move on. So some people like it. There's no nothing that you take home. There's no um, not much uh, stress about working at night. But the problem is to be at night, awake at night. Um, so I hope this this serves you. If if you are working. Um, on an observership right now and people tell you hey do you want to come and, and work at night with me and you know um, follow me through to the night uh, go there go there and um, and help him work at night um, you know volunteer to do the HMP parts volunteer to um, to write the notes what he while he is working on, on other patients or um, responding to nurses calls uh, save them save them time by you know doing a good job on HMPs a physical exam so um to their nights it's it's improved it's faster goes by faster and you can get a nice letter of recommendation um so my advice is if you get offered to work uh, or to follow someone at night time it's a good time to follow because that's only you and him together working at night so the more you have more exposure to you know to to show off your 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 knowledge to show off your, your ability to make notes and and so everything within the um, within the supervision of, of a physician. So hopefully it's, it's uh, you get to um, to do that. And if not, guess what you can do? If you are doing a rotation at daytime, and you can volunteer to come to work at nighttime. People will love it. We have usually we have students here in daytime, and. We, we would love to have students or residents at night time. Why? Because it, it's, it's very heavy at night time. So w when I'm working one admission, my student can be seeing another one and working on the HMP, working on the physical exam, and it will be great help. It will be um, if he is uh, good at identifying or talking to the patient and the family saying, oh, what are your chronic conditions? What are your uh, medications at home? Can you tell me all of them? I have plenty of time, just just tell me all that I need to know. And if I get that list from you, 
I will give you honors on your um, on your uh, review, on your performance review. Why? Because um, it's very important for us uh, when we admit patients to know what medications a patient is taking, because a lot of time can be saved if we know that in advance. Then we will make less mistakes. But usually, it takes on an extra call. It takes on more talking to a family member. So if an, in a busy night, sometimes we're not able to do that. But if you as a very, very um, motivated student, observer, get to do that for me, I will very much appreciate that and give you a good letter of recommendation. So good luck, guys. Uh, hopefully this serves you in something. We'll see you next time.